recently a viewer of this channel, the Quant channel, commented about tennis. What could I do or what were my thoughts regarding tennis? Now, I know next to nothing about tennis. I mean, I I watch a few Grand Slam tournaments, you know, I like Federer and all that kind of stuff. But from a betting point of view, I really don't have a methodology when it comes to tennis. I am familiar with soccer stats. So if I'm talking about football, I can go, okay, uh, here this team tends to score three or more goals at home. And so I'm willing to bet on them to win those or bet on them to have three or more goals. But what do you do in tennis? By chance, I was just um, messing around on Google. I found this site, tennisdata.co.uk. And this is basically like the football site, uh, which I use. So here, they've done a lot of the hard work for us you know they've they've gathered all these results in for both the men's and the women's game for the grand slams and the master series whatever they are but to- all these tournaments so that means from a quant channel point of view, from a data scientist or machine learning kind of person, we have stuff to mess around with. And it's also interesting because, you know, if you have two different things, you can kind of see what is special, unique, about, say, football, what's different when it comes to tennis? Firstly, in football, you can have win, loss, or draw. While in tennis, you're always going to have a winner. In football, the other bets typically would be on goals. So whether they're going to be three or more goals, whether both teams are going to score, uh, there are also bets on corners. So those would be the things that I'd be familiar with. What is the, what are the main ones when it comes to tennis? I am basically coming into this with next to the blank sheet of paper like with next to no knowledge but we can go through a similar process on OLBG they have guides about each of the various different sports so you know I can just read that and see what are the techniques that uh, betters use when it comes to tennis This is the notes that come with that tennis data site. So for every game, it tells us whether it's, you know, men's or women's, where the tournament was, what the name of the tournament is, 
date of match, tier, tournament ranking, also type of court, indoor, outdoor, and the surface is one I was hoping for, but they have it. Because, you know, you have clay court specialists. So I would like to know, you know, basically if I have all the matches data, then I might know that a certain player is really good at on clay. And then if they're playing someone who in general might be a far better player, but aren't that great on clay, well, then I'd know that. And probably most of the people betting haven't done their homework. They would more kind of go, oh, but this player is the more famous player. But he, but he doesn't particularly like clay. So it's great that on this in this database, they actually tell us, you know, whether the matches are on clay or grass, hardcore, etc. It tells us the number of games won in the first set. Okay, uh, so uh, number of sets won by match winner, number of sets won by match loser. Uh, okay, so uh, that's very handy because you know I don't have to do anything. I just this would be in I think it's in Excel format, and what I did was I s loaded the Excel and then saved that as a CSV. Because I can load that into, I mean, I can load that onto, into, I can load that in with R, uh, no problem. It also has the betting odds. That's great. Because when I was looking at the football, the odds are basically the best uh, indicator the best predictor that we have you know I, I I would have done comparisons using various different techniques in football to try and you know predict uh, what who's what the results gonna be but if I use if I include the betting odds that's the number one question that um, the system wants to know so if 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 it's trying to predict a result it'll say first thing it'll say is okay so the home team are the odds for the home team to win less than 2.2 or something like that because once it knows that then it's it it's in a good place it, it it's more confident that it, it can say oh well then the chances are the home team's gonna win so this is a fantastic resource. It also has the max odds. So that's very handy. Look, so like say um, I know that I, I expect Federer to win. I'm thinking maybe 10 years ago, but, and his odds are 1.2. But since I have this max odds data, I'm also able to look at how high during the match do the odds tend to go. So if in most games we ended up with, at some point, the odds going up as high as 1.8, well then, it doesn't make sense for me to bet on Federer to win at 1.2 because I know typically there will be a, a, a point in the game where I can get 1.8. That's a for example, I'm, I mean, I'm making up the 1.8 and 1.2, but the fact that this database includes the max odds is very interesting. Now, I don't know how to use that yet. I, don't, I haven't processed the data at all. For my football system, 
I had to abstract. I had to um, work through all the individual's results and put them into a league table so that I had a running league table for the season, for the Premier League. So that way, when there was a, say I'm playing a game, there's a game involved, uh, or there's a game on in the weekend, that league table has all the historical information up to that game. And so, um, but, I ha- but, you know, I, but I had to create that for the f- comparable file to this one in football. It, 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 it might say the, t- the home team, the away team, uh, goal scored in the first half, that kind of stuff. I have to think, of, I have to figure out what I want to do with this raw data. And that way I can basically create a framework and then I can apply my machine learning and that kind of stuff. Then I can ha- then I have stuff, th- then I have things that I can plot. I can mess around, try and find correlations, that kind of thing. I don't know what that, how you do that in tennis, but we have to start somewhere. So I just, for example, just produced this raw plot. plot. So these are all the games that were played in 2016. So say we have this dot. That dot says that the rank of the player who lost was maybe 155, 160. Because, you know, the the y-axis is the loser's, the rank of the loser. While the x-axis is the rank of the winner. So in this match, the loser had a rank, say, of 155. While the winner was rank probably 1 very very low rank as in one of the best players in the world remember low rank means better player rank one is the best player so what then well we can see that the better player the player with the lower rank nearly always beats the player with the higher rank so you know we can we can kind of draw a line nearly so every time a player with a lower rank plays a player with a higher rank they nearly always lose It's quite remarkable how homogeneous this is. If I hadn't seen this plot, I would have expected there to be, you know, dots where um, higher ranked players beat lower ranked players. You know, that it here they're all the same color. You know, the, a blue dot means that a, a high rank this was a higher high rank player against a lower rank player so yeah I mean uh, I would have expected um, things to be more mixed than this now this is kind of deceptive because the x-axis goes from 0 to 250 while the y-axis goes from 0 to what is that uh, 350 360 three, you know nearly 400 
So um, I might want to mess around a bit more with this. But this was a, a, a very rapid plot, just to try and see whether I uh, had loaded in the data correctly. I also just did a, you know, typed in a command as opposed to, you know, this is graphically seeing the information. So just told it to tell me how many times did uh, do, uh, did a higher ranked, how many times did a better player based on their rank beat a worse player and that comes out at 70% this plot is unclear that way it looks like oh every time but you know I don't have a clear uh, if there was a line along here where uh, where the slope was one, you know, where which that line was where the um, loser rank and winner rank are the same, that kind of thing. Uh, then I could more clearly see it, but there, there there is some there are some matches where um, the worst player d d does win. Also, I did a quick, I did a similar command and I asked it, how often does the worst player win, like the higher ranked player, um, when say you, you were, we were playing on clay and that comes out at 67%, which made sense to me because I thought, okay, there are probably clay specialists. So there will be people who are far, who are like if you're if you're more used to playing on a hard surface, or you're used to playing on grass. The nature of the game on clay is quite different. It, the uh, it, it's a slower court, so um, speed merchants, you know, aces and powerful serve people won't do as well on a clay surface it's more about uh slogging it out long rallies and that kind of thing that's my impression and not based on as i said i'm not a a great uh, and i don't know much about tennis basically i'm no expert in tennis likewise i did a plot on the odds for a match on Bet365, who are a very good uh, bookie. By that I mean, if you add up all the probabilities, you know, um, for the odds that they give you, it in football anyway, it adds up to about like 98%. They don't, they're not um, skimming off a lot. So they're very competitive that way. So that's the x-axis, while the y-axis is the max odds. The idea here was to see, okay, if the odds for a game have the favorite at say 1.5, should I put in an order at three? I mean, it, does the game, do the, uh, do the, do the odds jump all over the place typically? Well, this doesn't seem to suggest that. You do get slightly higher odds, but not, you know, you don't typically get the opportunity to bet a 10 to one. This isn't, um, I imagine, this could be visualized better, you know, maybe with a different axis and try and extract what is the uh, what is the ratio between 
the max winning odds and the starting winning odds so th then you could kind of go okay typically i would be able to if the odds were 1.5 typically i would be able to bet at odds of two sometime during the game maybe i could get 2.5 or maybe it only typically goes to 1.65 or something but either way knowing that would mean that we'd be able to essentially get far better odds than the ones that we'd be offered so that's just the early results from the tennis betting the next thing that i want to do is read up on what the various strategies are when it comes to betting on tennis so is it handicap betting is the value more in uh set betting going that the oh this is going to go to three sets as opposed to two sets um i don't know at the moment so we've got the we've got some data the aim is to see whether using that data we're able to um see more clearly to see whether we can find opportunities and make money so this is just the start i'll be curious to see what happens um one thing that was encouraging was that i went to olbg and you know you can see the comments the like the tips that other people have made and from say the four people who had commented all four had very healthy histories all four tended to be right uh 40 50 you know percent of the time they tended to be making money from their tennis bets which is different to what i'm 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 more used to when i look at the people who are making tips on football they tend to have been losing over the last six months so um that is encouraging i mean that suggests that there is more opportunity betting on tennis than there is on betting in football that said uh, when i when i went through this and when i looked at the four people who had all tended to be making money and followed their advice and whatever um, i lost so you know this betting is betting if you have any um urls like links i thought ideas about how to bet on tennis uh, please comment you know that that would be uh much appreciated thanks